The flare is commonly billed as a great entry point into espresso brewing at home. But if you're new to espresso, be prepared that there is a learning curve. I've had mine for about three months, and today I'll share with you my best effort to date and also share some tips and hacks that's helped me along the way. So let's get started. A common challenge is preheating the brew chamber. I make the water I brew coffee with, and so it's not something I like to waste by filling the brew chamber and then throwing out the water. I've been using this butane stove and a small stainless steel kettle. I fill it about a quarter of the way and place the root chamber on top. The water boils quickly and basically steam heats the chamber. And this has been working great. About the filter basket. Look closely and you'll notice that it tapers in slightly. Because of that I think it's a little more challenging to get an even extraction throughout the puck and for the duration of the pull. And at least for me I feel this fact alone is a big part of why you may get inconsistent results. Because of that I try to cut down as much as possible on other factors that hinder a good extraction. For the time being I've been going with a darker roast which typically means the coffee will extract easier. By doing that I don't have to stress about the temperature not being ideal or feeling forced to brew at 9 bars to get a good extraction. I fluff up the grounds and make sure there are no dents or thin areas. I also use fewer grounds as a way to reduce puck resistance, typically 15 grams or 16 grams. I like that over grinding coarser because grinding coarser usually means me pulling shots too fast and resulting in more channeling. Also this is unconventional but I distribute the grounds in a concave pattern. Typically you want an even distribution so that there's even resistance throughout the puck. But with this tapered basket, I think the puck being more dense as you move away from the center actually helps counteract water flow issues. I'm still evaluating this idea, but so far I've been getting better results. I take my time when tamping, compressing a little at a time. I rotate the porter filter to check for evenness. You can't see this, but I'm at eye level with the side of the tamper. It makes it really easy to see how close to level you actually are. Now that I have my puck, I try not to ruin it by introducing any cracking or loose areas. So no banging, tapping, or anything else that might disturb the puck. That includes placing the screen as gently as possible without making any divots. The last part of prep work is setting up the base. I attached my flare to this board. This is something I just started doing and I think it has a big impact on creating a stable platform and preventing shakiness in the pool. I'm still experimenting here, hence this scrap piece of wood. 
I'll probably end up using a cutting board and maybe turning it into some kind of flare workstation. We'll see how that goes. I also use a mirror so that the bottom of the porter filter and the pressure gauge are in view at all times. If you're not doing this already, I highly recommend it. The brew chamber has been steaming and is at the proper temperature. I almost never overfill, but got distracted here. It seems like the group head is at a little bit of a tilt. I might need to look at if I need to level out my flare. And now I'm ready to pull the shot. It starts off fine, one to two bars of pre-infusion for 15 seconds, and now a gradual ramping up to five to six bars, shooting for a total time of 45 seconds, including the pre-infusion. And here I'm going for a one to two ratio. I could have been smoother and a little faster getting up to the right pressure. And right here at 34 seconds, a channel developed. You'll see near the bottom right where it sprayed. I think I should have slightly ramped down the pressure when this happened and maintained it at maybe four bars of pressure. In the end, it was just that one spray and it appeared to stop channeling. It wasn't perfect, but I actually do enjoy learning from each shot. So this will be helpful for the next time. And to top it off, the shot was actually pretty good. Of course, I've had some really great shots from this and I hope I can make that a more common occurrence. In conclusion, I think to consistently pull great shots with the flare, you have to get your reps in. As I develop better skill, I probably won't need a lot of the crutches that I use. But I do think some of them might be keepers, and I hope to maybe evolve those ideas down the road. In the end, having a repeatable process is important, a good grinder and beans of course, but most of all, at least for me, it comes down to the actual pull. So I'm just gonna keep at it and enjoy the journey. Thanks for watching.